Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord is good. His mercies endure it forever. Our Lord is good. Our Lord is good. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. We bow before your throne. Hallelujah. We bow before the glory. God is good. Hallelujah. All the glory yes, to Hallelujah. The All the glory to you, O oh God. Ramba, Ramba, Sinkala, Basia. Yes, Father, you sit upon the throne. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. You reign. You reign. You reign, O God. I praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, our King. Grand Bathroom, our Saint Paul, our Savior. Hallelujah, Lord. Our Lord is good, your faithful. Good in the Saint Paul, our Saint Paul, our Savior. Father, we praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hmm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Father. You seated amongst the throne, Lord. And you reign, Father. Hallelujah to the King. You reign, Jesus. You reign forever, Lord. We join the angels and we worship you, Father. We join the angels, Lord, and we worship you, Father. We all you, Father, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. And we worship you, and we worship you Father. We pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. So loud, my name, you are all welcome, welcome, welcome to this broadcast today. Welcome to this message today. If you're here, I want to greet you. I want to congratulate you for being part of us this afternoon. We praise the name of the Lord. We give God the glory, honor, and adoration. Before we proceed, my name is Evangelist Esther Olayin Kadia. And um, we are going to be talking about the different gates of your life. Before we proceed, let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Everlasting King of glory. We praise you, God. We worship you. We adore you. We bless your name for this day. It is a day your Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, receive all the glory in Jesus' name. Lord Almighty, I I, I, I reduce so that you can increase in me, Father. I pray that you take charge of my tongue of clay and turn it into your coals of fire. Let your words come directly from the throne from above, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let the word come from the throne of God above, in the name of Jesus. Let it come forth from my mouth, O oh God, with power, with precision, in the name of Jesus. Let it come with power and with precision in the name of Jesus. Let the word touch our lives and let hearts and souls never remain the same again in Jesus' name. Father, we praise you. I sanctify this outlet. I sanctify this platform with the blood of Jesus. I pray, I, Lord, that only your word would propagate this atmosphere in Jesus' name. I bind and destroy every power of darkness that wants to militate against this message today i decree that it shall not prosper in the name of jesus i pray lord that the hearts of 
People shall be hoping, the ears shall be hoping to hear the word. And they shall not be only hearers of the word, they shall be doers of the word as well in Jesus' name. Father, take all the glory and bless us as we listen in Jesus' mighty name. I have prayed. Amen. Amen and amen in Jesus' name. Amen. Like you, like, um, you see from the title, it's titled, Different Gates of Your Life. We're talking about the different gates of your life. Every human, we have gates in our lives. There are gates of our lives as a human being. Is a, there's a doorway. There is a gateway. There is an opening that can be opened and be closed. It can be sealed or unsealed. It can be guarded or unguarded. Hallelujah. Let us go into the world. Let us go into the dictionary and check out the meaning of the word gates. Gate is a hinged, the dictionary meaning of gate means is a hinged barrier used to close an opening in a wall, a fence, or hedge. A gate is a barrier, a hinged barrier, it's a hinge on a hinge used to close an opening in a wall, a fence, or hedge. Amen. So that is a gate in English dictionary, in English meaning. It's a gate. We also have in English meaning, another meaning for it, another um, form of meaning given in different form. It says that the entrance, a gate is an entrance paid to enter into a spot, a facility, exhibition, hall, Etc. for any event. So a gate is also a place that it can be it 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 costs people to go in through it. It costs them money or other means to enter into the gates. There are gates to venues, gates to arena, gates to sports, gates to cinema, gateway to so there are different kinds of gates. You have to pay to go in through these particular kinds of gates. So that is what the English meaning is telling us in this instance. This is the second menu we are uh, going through. It says, entrance paid to enter into a sport, facility, exhibition, etc. for any event. It's a gate. Okay? It's also an outlet, an inlet to a confinement of a person, place, or thing. So, if there is <clears throat> anything that you have set aside, it can be a human being that is in it, it can be an item that is in it, it can even be anything that you have kept inside a confinement with a gate, with a doorway to go into it or come out of it with a key. That is the gate to that confinement. It could be a human being inside the confinement. So he's saying it's an outlet or inlet to a confinement, person, place, or thing. That is also a gate. That it has to be open to go into it. It has to be open to access. It's a gate. So we have given the English meaning and uh, dictionary meaning of what gate is. It's, we, we see it as something that we have to pass through to enter somewhere. It's something that we have to go into to, to have access to it. It's, we might have to pay to go through the door. Like if we're going into a cinema hall or going into a sport arena, you might need to pay at the gates to have the access to go in. So it's in different kinds of um, 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 meaning or um, scenario to describe what a gate is. We have different types of gates. I haven't described what a gate is. There are different kinds of gates. There is a gate to a house. When you build a house, there is a door post on the house by which people can go in or out of that house. That is a gate. There is a gateway compound where you, you know, you have a, 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 a very big vineyard or a very big yard surrounding the house. So you might get it as well that people will need to knock on the door to be able to come in. You will need, you will need to open it for people to come through it. 
that is also a gate, a gate to a compound. We have a gate to an area, selected area. Maybe you are living in a gated environment. It could be a gated uh, uh, a government residential area that people that want to come to see you may need to, first of all, pass through the gate at the outskirts of that area where you are. People will need mm -hmm. to go through the guards, the security at that junction for them to be able to penetrate in to come to see you at your compound. Hallelujah. So there's also a gate to an area, a selected area. The, the fourth type of gate is also a gate to a community. You all, you, there is also a gate to a community where for you to access that community, for you to have a breakthrough to a community, you need to pass through a gate. It could be a gate to a local government area, a gateway to a, 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 a borough, a gateway. Well, you know when you're going to different... Like in Lagos, we have the Mushin, the Keja, we have a uh, uh, um, Ojuelegba, we have Yaba, we have Palm Grove, we have different areas and neighborhoods. So we have communities, gates to inside to get into a community. We also have a gate to a, a town, a city. So to get into that gate, to get into that city, you need to pass through a, 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 a gate. To get into that city, you need to pass through a gate for you to access that city. You, it might be a toll gate that you have to pay to get into that community, to get into that city. It might be, you know, you might need to pay, you know, uh, uh, to, 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 it might be a toll gate. It might be any form of, you know, barrier that is that you have to stop by to gain access to enter into that town, into that city. You might have to pay as well. That is a gate. Amen. And you also have a gate to a state, to enter into a state, to penetrate into a state, to have access into that state. You also need a gate. When we talk about gates here, we're talking about the airport, the seaport, we're talking about the bus stations, we're talking about the train stations, different means of getting into that city and what you need to pass through to gain access inside the city uh, is the gate, which could be the airport, like I mentioned, to travel from one state to the other, you might go through the air, you have to board the plane at the, uh, uh, at the airport, you need some valid you have to have valid documents to be able to enter into the airport and board the plane and when you get off the plane they will also assess your documents and see that yes you are who you say you are they will verify you before you get into the state into the city hallelujah and um the bus stations as well, you need to have your documentations. The train stations, you need to have documentations. Likewise, in Nigeria, or you want to travel into um, a, 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 a state, like I said, into an area, into anywhere, you need the airport, you need all these means, and these are the doorways of the gate. You need to travel to Nigeria, you need your passport, you need to go to the airport, you need to verify, that is a gate. You need to throw, go to U.S., you need to go to any other country in the diaspora, you need your passport, you need to pass through verification for you to, can, to be able to gain access to that gate. Hallelujah. So, those, we have different kinds of gates, like I told you, uh, different, different kinds of gates that you pass through to have access to the city, to the nation, to the country, to any part of the world. There's also the gate to your heart. This is another kind of gate. It is the seventh kind of gate I'm talking about. The gate to your heart, which is also the gate to your destiny. Who do you permit into your life? Who do you permit into your heart? What do you permit into your heart? What um, when I say permit, you still that allow it, it's you that unlock that gate for that thing to pass through, for that thing to penetrate into your heart so that it can stay in you, so that it can be part of you and become part of you. So no, so now it is you that gives permission for that thing or that item 
to penetrate to gain entrance into your heart so what do you how do you guard the gates of your heart you, 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 things get and can enter into your the gates of your heart through what you listen to to what you you watch and what you apply into your life you have to be able to do the five senses, the eyes, um, the ears, um, the, 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 the five senses. Uh, that you, we all know what the five senses are. Different kinds of senses of human being, that, um, which are mainly five, that can be used to penetrate into you, to your heart. Okay? It could be what you smell, what you hear, what you see, what you, 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 you do, what you listen to, what you allow into your heart, what you permit into your life. That is the gate of your heart, the gate that you have opened up for those things to be able to penetrate and come into you and become part of you. So what is it that you are allowing into your life? That is the gate to your life. There's also the gate of life. I've talked about the gates of your heart. There's also the gate of life, which is the eighth kind of gate, the gate of life. Now, this is the gate of, to life. The gate of life is Jesus Christ. There's no other means to say it. There's no other way to say it. I don't want to mince words. The only gate of life is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Bible says in John 14, 6, it said, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except by me. He said to them that I am the gate. I am the gate to life. I am the gate to eternal life. Nobody gets to the Father. Nobody is part of the kingdom of God except through me. So Jesus Christ is the only gate to life. Now, the ninth gate, which is the last gate I'm going to talk about, is the gate of death. The gates of death. I spoke about the gate of life, number eight, and the gate of death, number ten. Again, let me quickly rush through the, the, the nine gates again before I, I talk about this last one, the gate of death. I spoke about we have different gates, the gates to a house, gates to a compound, gates to an area, a selected area, gates to a community, gates to a town or city, gates get to a state, a city or a nation. Get to a nation, and I also spoke about the gate to your heart. I spoke about the gate of life, which is Jesus Christ, and there is gate of death. So I spoke about the gate of life. Jesus saying, "I am the way, the only way, the truth, and the life. Nobody cares unto the Father except through me." According to the book of John fourteen verse six, that also means that if you do not have me in your life, have Jesus. This is Jesus talking. Without me, you don't have life. He said, I am the truth. I am the truth, the way, and the life. So if you do not have Jesus, Jesus saying, I am. So that means without him, without Jesus, you do not have life. And you do not have, you cannot get to the Father. You don't have eternal life. And if you don't have eternal life, that is death. So the last one I'm talking about here is the gate of death, which is absence of Jesus Christ. The gate of death, which is the last one, number nine, which is the absence of Jesus Christ in your in, in your life. John 3, 16 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That is through Jesus. Through Jesus you have everlasting life only through jesus without jesus there is no life and that is death and that means you have opened up the gates of death if you don't have jesus christ and when i say death i do not mean physical death i mean spiritual death so so many people are alive walking around today physically alive but they are spiritually dead because they do not have jesus christ in their life so the only gate to eternal life is jesus christ and the absence of Jesus Christ in your life is the gate of death. That will not be a portion in the name of Jesus. The, the, the book of John 3, 36 says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. If you believe on the Son, you have everlasting life. The gate of life is open unto you. Amen. And he that believeth not... 
the sun shall not see life, but the wrath of God, which is death. The wrath of God is death. I am so sorry, the enemy, the devil is a liar. So, so I'm on the number nine that says that there is gate of death, which is the absence of Jesus Christ. It is, it is um, John 14, verse 6. And um, so I um where we were in the, 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 the number nine, the gates of um, the gates of death, amen. So the Bible says in John 3:36, he that believeth not, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God, which is death. Amen. So now we have established the nine gates, the nine gates, amen, the nine gates. Now we are going on to talk about the, 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 the importance of these gates, especially the gates to your heart. And number eight and nine, the gate of life, the gate of death. The gates, all gates need to be guarded, to be guarded against illegal entrance. Not everyone, not everyone need to have access into the gate. Not everyone. Now, let me read again the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 14. It says, all these cities were fortified and unassailable with their high walls, gates, and bars. All these cities were fortified and unassailable with their high walls, gates, and and bars hallelujah it means that the cities were fortified they were unassailable nobody could penetrate into the city with their high walls gates and bars the cities were fortified nobody could get through it nobody could have access to it so the israelites built their cities they fortified it around with high walls and there were gates and bars so that nobody just have access into the gates nobody just come into their house nobody could just come into their territory nobody just come into their domain their 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 their, 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 their home their compound unannounced unapproved amen so likewise we need to fortify the gates of our hearts not everyone needs to have access into the gates of our heart amen and the decision to open or close gates is on you and you need to apply wisdom to open or close your gates hallelujah you need to know who to close your gates against you need to know who to open your gates for Amen. Because through the gates, you can usher in goodness, breakthrough, leeway to greatness, helpers of destinies coming through the gates. If you open the gates to them, you must be able to apply wisdom and knowledge and able to discern. Amen. Um, blessings of life coming through these gates. So you don't, you mustn't shut these gates against these ones, against these positive entrances of God, against the angels of God ushering goodness unto you. You must not shut your gate against your helpers of destiny. Hallelujah. Because these are the people, individuals that God has sent to help your life, to bless your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us read the book of Genesis chapter 19 verse 1. What happened with Lot? Lot ushered in the two angels that God sent to destroy the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Let, uh, let me quickly read Genesis 19 verse 1. It says that that evening, the two angels came to the city of Sodom. Lot was still sitting near the gates. Thank God he was sitting near the gates. God has sent two angels to go and destroy the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. But... Remember that when Lord God sent them, Abraham had saw them on the way when they were sojourning to the city of Sodom and Gomorrah to destroy it. And they told Abraham what God told them to go and do. Abraham began to beg on their behalf because he knew that his cousin Lot and his wife reside in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Remember that God wanted to destroy the city of Sodom and Gomorrah because of their sins. Their sin was so much before God and it was just too much for God to bear. God needed to destroy all of them. God decided to destroy all of them. Everybody and the city and everybody that occupied it. And Abraham began to beg the angels that please, suppose you find five people, suppose you find so, so, so people, please don't destroy, but there were no righteous ones. 
he was saying to God, so to these angels, that supposing there are at least five people that are righteous, why would you destroy with the five people there? There was no five. And the angel said, if we find five, fine. Okay? But thank God the Lord was sitting at the gate, the importance of the gate. He said, the evening, the two angels came to the city. I'm reading Genesis 91. That evening, the two angels came to the city of Sodom. Lot was sitting near the city gate and saw them. He got up and went to them. He bowed to show respect. He showed them respect. He showed them respect. You see, your attitude decides your altitude. You are respectful. You are, you know, very nice very approachable you are uh, very, very courteous to people it can attract blessings onto you but when you are hostile and very ag argumentative ready to fight anybody you you may usher your usher away send away your blessings and carriers of your blessings and breakthroughs so he said that that evening the two angels came to the city of Sodom. Lot was sitting near the city gate. He was just happened to be sitting near the city gate. Thank God, the gate. And saw them. Lot saw the angels. He got up and went to them. He bowed to show respect. And said, Sirs, please come to my house and I will serve you. There you can wash your feet and stay the night. Then tomorrow you can continue on your new on your journey so lot begged them to accommodate them lot begged them to show them hospitality lot begged them to 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 be comfortable to feed them to 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 give them rest to to give them water to wash their feet lot begged them to 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 be hospitable to them even though they were initially you know rejecting lots um, approach and and uh, offer eventually they agreed because Lot was persistent Lot wanted to help them Lot wanted to show them um, uh, uh, hospitality Lot wanted to show them love and listen what happened they eventually gave it and Lot had take them to his house and he, 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 he blessed them, he gave them hospitality, he gave them food, he gave them bed, he nourished them. Thank God that Lot was sitting at the gate. If Lot was not at the gate, what would have happened? The, Lot and his family would have perished in, in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. But because he showed them mercy and compassion and accommodation and blessed them and gave them rest, when the time to begin the destruction, the angels told Lot and his family to run. He gave them the opportunity to get out of peril, to get out of tuk-tuk tumor, of torment, of storms of life. He gave them a leeway, he gave them a doorway for them to escape the ish, the problem, the destruction that was coming. Because Lot was at the gate and he opened the door and he ushered them and blessed the angels. And therefore, he returned the angels to open the door for an escape for Lot and his family. Amen. So when, and this is wisdom. Thank God for the wisdom that God gave to Lord to be able to do this beautiful hospitality that gained him his blessing and his life, which would have been destroyed in, the, in, 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 in Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. So also, you can also usher in pain if you are not with wisdom. You, one can usher in pain, storms and disappointments of life and troubles of life, problems and anguish. If you marry wrong, that's a doorway to, 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 to travails, to pain. If you marry wrong, if you marry the wrong person, if you get into the wrong crowd, if you follow the wrong people, if you engage in sinful acts, if you engage in drugs and things, those are terrible doorways that will open doors, that will open uh, or shine in uh, uh, problems and storms and issues of life. You don't want to do that. That is foolishness. So you need wisdom to know who to keep open the gates for and who to keep out of the gates of your life.
God wants you to guard and guide your own gates from the penetration of the enemies. But God also wants you to possess the gates of your enemies. As God wants you to guard your own gate against the infiltration of the enemy into your life, into your abode, into your heart, into your destiny. At the same time, God wants you to penetrate and take charge of the gates of your enemies, to be in control, to terrorize your enemies. Hallelujah. God wants you to fortify your own gates from penetration of the enemy. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 8 says, in American Standard Version, it says that, um, it says, he that did get a pit shall fall into it. And whoso breaketh through a wall, a serpent shall bite. He that diggeth a pit shall fall into it. That means if you, remember I talked about the fortification. In the book of Deuteronomy, um, chapter 5, verse 14, I said that when they're building the city gates, to you they fortify. Deuteronomy verse, chapter 5, verse 14 says, all these cities were fortified and unassailable with their high walls, gates, and bars. That's how to build the gates, with high walls, with gates, with bars, including the gates of your heart. Build them with high walls, with gates and bars. No enemy can infiltrate. No, no, no enemy can, permit, can gain permit into your um, heart, into your life. You, they, you, they fortify with high walls, with bars, with iron bars, with gates, so that there shall be no infiltration of the enemy into your abode, into your home, into your gate. Hallelujah. And so any enemy that wants to come in by force, any enemy that is challenging your gate, that wants to penetrate into the gate of your life, the Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy, in the book of Deuteronomy um, 5, 4, verse, sorry, in the book of, Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 8. He says that he that dicket a pit shall fall into it. If you want to penetrate into my gate and I'm not allowing you, I don't want you in. I've barricaded you and you're still penetrating. You still want to come in. You are digging a pit for yourself. He that dicket a pit shall fall into it. And whoso breaketh through a wall, a serpent shall bite him. Whoso breaketh into a wall, a serpent shall bite him. So if you, by, as an enemy, you just want to go into that fortified gate. A Christian that has barricaded the gate of their life with prayers, that has fortified themselves against the enemy, and the enemy is still trying to infiltrate, the enemy has dug a pit and is going to fall into it. The enemy wants to break an edge. Okay, I also break it through a wall. A serpent shall bite. You want to break through my wall. You want to break through a fortified Christian's wall that you are not allowed to, that you want to break into it, the serpent shall bite. Hallelujah. That is the word of God for your life and my life in the name of Jesus. So nobody can come in through your gates if you don't allow them. You need to fortify it. You need to keep it armed, well fortified. Amen. And then also, as you are fortifying your gate and you are destroying the plan of the enemy from getting into your gate, as you are destroying all their missions against your life and they are falling and you are destroying the camp of your enemies, they are not coming through your gate. You have fortified your gate with the word of God. You are protecting the gates of your life with the word of God. Likewise, move, march on and Take hold of the gates of your enemy. So you are not, you are, you are fortified already and you are also marching on to terrorize your enemy. Your enemy must know that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So you are getting hold of the gates of your enemy. The Bible says in the book of Genesis 22 verse 17, it says, I will indeed bless you and make your offspring as numerous as the stars of the sky and the sand on the seashore. Your offspring will possess the city gates of their enemies. Your offspring will possess the city gates of your enemies. That means, apart from you overcoming your enemy, because of you, even your own children, 
they will take charge. They will possess the gates of the enemies. Anybody that possesses the gates of the enemies has possessed that land of the enemy. Definitely. That means the enemy has, is naked. The enemy has no, uh, 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 has no protection. You have taken away the protection of the enemy. You have opened up the gates. You have snatched the gate. That is what your children will do to the gate of your enemies. That means your enemies' power has been destroyed. That's your, that means your enemies has become powerless. They have become useless when your children are taking charge of the gates of your enemies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is what God wants you to do to the gates of your enemies. Take charge of it. The Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 24 verse 16, it says again that they bless Rebekah saying to her, our sister, may you become thousands upon ten thousands. May your offspring possess the gates of their enemy. You see, your offspring possessing the gates of the enemy is showing sign that you are a conqueror. It's a sign that you have victory in Christ because you are not only fortified. Even your the blessings is descending upon your children, and your children is also a terror to the kingdom of darkness. That means your enemies will see you and your children, and they will flee. They cannot stand before you and your children. They cannot talk. They cannot move. They are powerless. They are useless. Hallelujah. Amen. The book of Judges, chapter sixteen, verse three. Let's read about Samson. The Bible says. Samson lay until midnight. Then at midnight he got up and took hold of the doors of the city gate and the two doors posts and pulled them down and pulled them up. So Samson took hold of the doors and posts of the gates of the enemy, the Philistines, at that at that time. Samson took hold of the doors, the two posts, the two doors, and pulled them up. With all the security and everything. And the Bible says that he put, placed them on his shoulder and carried them up to the top of the hill, which is opposite Hebron. And the Philistines saw this, that he had left them gateless. Their gates are open to the infiltration of the enemy. They are naked. They have no protection. They have nothing to stop the enemy from penetrating. They, they were petrified. They were afraid of Samson. Samson became a terror to the enemy at, at that time. Hallelujah. So that's what God wants you to do to your enemy. He wants you to possess the land of your enemy. He wants you to terrorize your enemy. He wants you to, he, he wants to unseat them from their place of comfort and sit you comfortably on that seat. He wants to unseat your enemy that are sitting on the place of glory, that are sitting on, in the place of mockery, mocking you, that are sitting on a place of gloating. They are gloating at you. They are, they are, they are trying to shame you. God is unseating them and enthroning you on a, on, a, on, a, on a kingship throne above them. He is unseating them. He has uprooted their gates. Hallelujah. The book of Joshua 6, chapter, if you read Joshua 6, chapter, chapter, Joshua chapter 6, from verses 1 to 27, it talked about the walls of Jericho fell. When God, God had already ascertained that that land, it belongs to the Israelites. He's taking them there. He wants them to possess it. But at present, the enemies were occupying that land in Jericho. So what did God do? God told them how to infiltrate, how to take charge. It, you will read about how the walls of Jericho fell after Israelites marched around the city walls once a day for six days. The seventh times, if they march on the seventh day, they marched seven times round the city and then blew the trumpets and then the wall fell and they were naked and the Israelites were able to possess their possession. They were able to take charge of the land. They were able to go into the land that God has given them. They were able to chase out the enemies and they occupy the, the, the seat. They occupy the land as their own possession. Hallelujah. That's what God wants you to do. That's what God wants to do in your life. So this is what God wants to do about the gates of your life. You need to guard the gates of your life. You need to guard it and then you need to infect to to, uh, to to approach the gates of your enemy and take charge of it let your generation pray and let your generation be be a terror to 
the kingdom of darkness to your enemies and let them take charge of their gates. When they take charge of their gates, they are put, they have they are all they are in charge of the enemies. When your children take charge of the gates of your enemies, they are in charge of that city. They are that means the enemies are automatically enslaved to your children. They have enslaved them for them to be able to take charge of their gates. And that's what God has in plans for you. Hallelujah. The gates of your life. You need to guard it jealously. The gates of your heart. And how do you fortify your own wall and gates and also possess the gates and the lands of your enemy? I'm going to leave with several points before I go. One, give your life to Jesus. Like I said, it's only Jesus that you can, you know, stand on. And have eternal life. It's only Jesus that can give you victory. Is the way, the truth, and the life. Just like I mentioned before. Where you have Jesus on your side. You are able to overcome. The Bible says that greater one is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. And when you have God on your side. The enemies cannot withstand you. God is greater than every mountain. So you need Jesus for you to have access to the Father. So you need Jesus. And then secondly, <clears throat> after you give your life to Jesus, you have to be prayerful. Pray without ceasing. Pray, pray, pray and fortify the gates of your life. The gates of your heart. Hallelujah. Obtain the gates of life and destroy forever the gates of death in your life. Amen. So, but do not be discouraged by anything that comes your way. Don't be discouraged. Don't be put off. No matter what the storms of life may be, no matter what the challenges of life may be, it could be a test. It could be a doorway to your greatness. Don't be discouraged. Don't give up. Hallelujah. Number four, if you fall, if you fall, rise up again. That's the fourth. No matter how many times a righteous man will fall, even if he falls seven times, the Bible says you should always rise again. So when you fail, fail is not failure except you give up. When you don't give up, even if you fail and you don't give up and you keep marching, you have not failed. You are just, you know, taking a turn. It's just taking a bend to your destination. So failure is not failure except you give up. It is just a turn. It's just a, a bend. It's just a, a, a curve somewhere as you go along the path to your breakthrough. Hallelujah. So rise again, even if you, even if you fall. Again, let your story turn to your glory. No matter what the story of your life may be, no matter how bad, no matter how terrible, turn it to your glory. That is the story that has equips you to become a bona fide champion in Christ Jesus, to become a bona fide victorious one, to become a, 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 a terror to the kingdom of darkness. That story, that story you passed through, that thing, that storm of life, that journey that you went through is not for, 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 for is for a purpose. It's not just for play. It's for a purpose to make you be to make you to make you have a purpose driven life to make you get to your destiny to achieve your greatness to achieve your mandate in life for you to be blessed for you to get through that uh, doorway to your breakthrough that is the reason for that journey that story turn it to glory don't give up until it's turned to glory or it's turned to a uh, testimony that you and give God only all the glory. And people can say, wow, what a testimony. So that story must turn to a testimony. That story must turn to glory. Hallelujah. Number six, let your shame turn to fame. Amen. No matter what you have gone through, Jesus Christ was, was nailed on the cross of Calvary. He was shamed. That's the utmost shame. Before the whole... Uh, the nations at that time he was nailed for your sake for my for my sake he was shamed so what can you go through what may you be going through now that you consider that's shame there's nothing that is uh, forever the bible says this too shall pass so let that story let uh, let that shame turn into fame it will give you fame because it shall talk it shall it shall bring you before kings it shall bring you before great men it shall bring you before mighty men and you will sit with mighty men and women in jesus name look at the story of joseph he was put in the pit he was put in the jail he could have been ashamed that i'm me i'm a i'm a 
jailbird. I'm an ex jail. I'm, uh, I'm this, I'm that. Everybody will look down at me. But no, he did not give up. Even in the jail, he was thriving and he never gave up, gave up on God. If you don't give up on God, God will not give up on you. And his story, <clears throat> his shame turned to glory. Hallelujah. Let your weakness also turn to strength. No matter what your weakness is, lay it on God. Give it on God. Put it in God's hand to empower you. Now you know your point of prayer when you can identify your weakness. The Bible says that let the weak say I am strong because in Jesus Christ you are strong. When you hold on to Jesus, when you hold on to the hem of the garment of Christ, when you lay it up on Christ and you decide to, to, to just bring it to the cross, God will turn that weakness into strength. And when people have looked at you and belittled you and trampled under you, they will see you up there soaring higher and higher in the name of Jesus. And that will be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen in Jesus' name. Amen. So, please... Adhere to this message, you can go back and listen to it again and again and again to encourage yourself, to empower yourself, to march on, to be guided regarding the gates of your life. Amen. The Lord will continue to be with you in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, I commit all this once into your hands that there no, shall not be hearers alone, there shall be doers in Jesus' name. Let the word penetrate into their hearts and let it equip them to greater heights, to fortify them, to keep them going to keep them swearing in the name of Jesus. Let them become testimonies, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you have blessed these ones and the gates of their lives is secured. Their hearts is guarded against the infiltrations of the enemy in Jesus' name. They will continue to possess the gates, the gates of their enemies and their children will lay hold of the gates of their enemies in Jesus name. Father Lord I pray that they shall continue to soar higher and higher and none shall miss heaven in Jesus name. Thank you Lord because you have answered in Jesus mighty name. I have prayed. Amen. 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 In Jesus name. Amen. Thank you all for staying this long. Thank you all for being with me. Thank you all for listening. Please continue to share this message. It is a very important, crucial message from the throne of grace and mercy in Jesus' name. I love you. The Lord loves you more. Go forth and do exploits for the Lord. We shall come see you again next week in Jesus' name. Remember our Thursday prayer meeting? We always meet on Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. 30 minutes prayer session between 9 p.m. and 9 30 p.m please join us right here on this platform and you, sh you shall be greatly blessed in jesus name thank you all remain blessed bye thank you